Welcome back to 12 to Your Health. I'm Dr. Derek De Silva in for Janine Srafasi. Each year, more than 600,000 people undergo worldwide undergo knee replacement surgery. The reasons vary from injury and arthritis to infection. Well, there's another option more active patients may be able to consider. It's called partial knee replacement. Here to talk about this procedure is Dr. Robert Kale, an orthopedic surgeon in Ridgewood. And also joining us is Mr. Frank DiGiamo of Saddlebrook. Frank is a patient of Dr. Kale who underwent the partial knee resurfacing procedure. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having uh, us. Dr. Kale, talk to me first about what the most common reason is. I mentioned infection, I mentioned arthritis. What do you see as the most common reason? Clearly the most common reason for performing uh, knee replacement surgery in general and specifically partial knee replacement surgery is a condition called osteoarthritis where the normal cartilage is worn uh, off the end of the bone uh, and patients encounter a condition we call bone-on-bone -bone arthritis most typically from normal age-related wear and tear osteoarthritis of the knee. Uh, Mr. Dijamo, you had this procedure done how long ago? Five and a half years ago. So, but what I also understand in talking to you before we came on here was that you had a total knee replacement in one, and how long ago was that? That was almost 14 years. That's for the total. Right. And the partial one done five years five ago? Five and a half years. What did you see as the difference between the two? The discomfort, the pain level, there's no, nothing compared to the total knee replacement. So there was much less pain oh, with the partial? I, the uh, partial knee replacement, I went in on a hospital on a Wednesday, came out on a Thursday, walked into his office on a Monday without a cane and no pain. Wow, wow. I mean, I know that a total knee replacement, uh, Dr. Kale, is something that's extremely painful, right? It is, uh, relatively speaking, much more painful than uh, the partial knee replacement surgery uh, being performed through a minimally invasive mm -hmm. approach, absolutely. Yeah, right. what we have right now, I guess, is, uh, can you just walk us through this demo? Sure, this is a computer animation of a total knee replacement being performed. You can see the femoral component being installed onto the end of the th uh, thigh bone and the tibial component installed, and then in between there's a plastic articulating spacer and now the knee is uh, reduced after the operation and uh, that's the new total knee replacement cartoon mm -hmm. images. Right and now we also have some video that we're going to be showing of what the partial uh, looks like but before oh here we go the, can just talk us through this. Sure in contrast here's a cartoon image of a uh, partial knee, osteoarthritic knee, when there's diseased cartilage, uh, there's wear involving only one of the three compartments of the knee. This cartoon is showing bone-on-bone -bone arthritis involving the medial side of the knee, and the other two-thirds of the knee are otherwise pristine, free of any disease. Right. Uh, and thus, in this particular uh, patient, a partial knee replacement is being performed uh, through a uh, small incision, uh, only performing a resurfacing of the, in, in the disease disease and involved compartment of the knee. So it's only on one side versus both sides. Is that is that the difference here? Yes, well actually there's three compartments to the knee. In this particular cartoon rendering there's a uh, replacement of one of the three compartments. I believe later in the video we're going to look at the patellofemoral joint which is the joint underneath the kneecap and then the other compartment, the lateral compartment which was free of any disease and therefore not replaced. So only one of the three compartments is being replaced with the partial mm -hmm. knee replacement. Now who is a candidate. Well, here's let's let's talk through this one also. Let, talk us through this. So again, showing just a different view of this knee. You can see. And this is the back or the front part of the knee. This is uh, looking right now at the front of the knee. Okay. And the, the replaced side is involving the inner side of the knee. The uh, the front part of the knee, the patellofemoral joint underneath the kneecap, is on top, not being replaced. And the outside of the knee, the lateral compartment, is also not being replaced. So two thirds of the patient's normal anatomy is preserved. Uh, uh -huh. and, and therefore the in incision can be a lot smaller and the, and the bone resection can be a lot now, more conservative. Who typically is a candidate for a partial knee replacement? So candidates for partial knee replacement are patients that present with disease that involves only one third of the compartments of the knee. So either the medial side, the inside, the outside, or the front side of the knee where they have symptoms that match where their x-rays reveal disease. Uh, so approximately of my uh, total joint replacement, po replacement population, I would say on average probably anywhere from 5 to 7% of my patient population would be a candidate for this special 
procedure. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Mr. DiGiamo, talk to me a little bit about what you know, how, how did you find out about Dr. Kale and how did that th whole process happen? Because obviously you had arthritis in your, is that what you had was yes. arthritis in your knee? Yes. And uh, you heard about the partial thing and you just got in touch with him, is that what no, how that worked? I, I didn't know anything about the partial until I went to see him. No, so did I, he do your, your total? No. Somebody else did the Somebody total? Somebody else did okay. that 14, almost 14 years ago. Yeah, he probably wasn't even around. He looks like <coughs> no. a baby anyway, but anyway. I always ahead. ask him that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so you, you had the partial done. What was your rehab like? Easy. Easy. Like I said, I walked into his office without a cane. Uh -huh. The next couple of days I started rehab a couple of times a week. And it was just... And, and today you are running around... No, uh, Pain-free, nothing. I haven't had a bit of pain with this day at all. All right. What, what is what does a typical patient look like, uh, Dr. Kale, that comes in to see you that would be a candidate for this? Well, the typical patient is the, is the same as the typical patient for uh, a total knee replacement, but some people end up just getting disease involving only one compartment. My a patient age range has, has ranged from patients in their 30s all the way to patients in their mid-80s, uh, and some people just end up wearing one compartment of the knee. They're just genetically predisposed to only wearing one part of the knee. Uh, some people, for instance, have had meniscal surgery or arthroscopic surgery in the mm -hmm. past where a certain amount of cartilage was removed from one compartment and this is not in fact post-traumatic wear and tear but because of a trauma they they perhaps had a torn meniscus underwent arthroscopic surgery and due to that cartilage loss ended up developing arthritis in their knee prematurely uh -huh. and the other two-thirds of the knee uh, was uninvolved and so these would be perfect candidates for a partial well knee. we've got a little bit of time left here uh, just very quickly cost and insurance coverage is it covered it is a uh, procedure that is FDA approved and completely covered, yes. And it is probably less expensive than a total knee replacement, I would imagine, right? I mean, just... Yeah. I believe it is. I'm not really sure about those details, but mm -hmm. given the fact that, the, as you can see from the models, uh, the the size of the the metal involved and the hardware involved is certainly much less significant than, than the components involved with the total knee right. replacement. So I believe it would be co less We've expensive. got just a couple of seconds left. Frank, any closing comments? I know that... On my total knee, I had arthroscopic surgery first, uh -huh. and then later on I had to have the total. Right. But he did the partial, and I'm so happy with wonderful, it. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Dr. Kale, closing comment? Well, I just think that this is, uh, in, in the right ideal patient, it's a fantastic operation. I routinely perform this now as an outpatient uh, through a three to four inch incision. There's no blood loss involved, uh, requiring blood transfusion, uh, and uh, patients retain the Excellent. majority of their normal anatomy and have ha had an outstanding result. Great. Dr. Kale, Frank, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure having you on the program today. And once again, folks, if you have any questions or comments about today's interview or there's a topic you'd like to see discuss in our program, email your thoughts to us to, at 12 to your health at news12.com. Stay with us on 12 to your health. When we come back, I'll discuss the dangers of a commonly used winter clothing accessory.